basically the slides said all, so uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, it's great to be here. Uh, I'm an engineer, a software engineer, uh, by education, by hobby, by the whole thing I have been doing my whole life. And uh, being here in, in Bangalore is, is like being in Mecca, because like large amount of world software has been developed here in this region. So uh, huge thanks for you for your job. Great job. But yes, I come from Estonia. So it's a small nation. Uh, we like more to say we are not from Baltics, but we are from Nordics. But yeah, that's a, that's a small issue. Uh, and as I said, I'm a government CIO at the moment, but I come from private sector. Uh, I was part of the team uh, who built up the largest software development center uh, in our region. Uh, I was also managing director of that company for many years. And then after 12 years, I sold my shares, uh, all of them. Uh, I was early retired. Um, and then the government noticed that I'm un unemployed. And it's a small nation, so we are relatives uh, with each other. So we always uh, meet each other in funerals and in weddings. <laughs> so the minister and the prime minister and the president said, like, why not you to join the government and do your duty uh, and serve as a, as a government officer? And of course, I said no, uh, but they were quite persuasive. And uh, so I finally joined. And it has been extremely interesting because I'm like a kid in a candy store. Uh, IT is a complicated thing, uh, so politicians didn't want to interfere. So if they know that there is a smart guy, okay, do what you want to do. So I have a huge amount of money, I have full political support, and uh, <laughs> voila. There was, there was one thing, uh, I was lucky enough, uh, when I sold my shares, uh, I, I was lucky enough to earn enough money so I actually can afford working for the government. Let me, so. <laughs> But yeah, uh, let's, let's not talk about me, let's talk about this. Um, yes, Estonia is, I think, the most highly developed information society in the world. Uh, the best example for this is the society actually works, works fully digitally. So for example, if I approach Estonian with paper contract, they look at you. Why you use those Unefficient, non-economical friendly method. Why? You should, I mean, you should do digital signatures. Just send me an email with digitally signed contract and that's it. And the whole society works this way. You can even vote over the internet digitally in Estonia. So even if I'm here in India at the moment, I could like, participate in, in voting in Estonia. So what we have developed is the system where whenever Estonians are, like worldwide, they can be part of our society. And to do that, we, we, we did the same thing what your government is doing now. So already like uh, 25 years ago, everybody got unique identity, uh, like a number. Uh, 13 years ago, everybody got digital IDs with a chip, that's the left one. Uh, 2007 mobile IDs. Uh, so I can sign, I can authenticate myself, I can like, basically do everything in private sector and in government sector with this. So, and that has been like the basics of all, all the story. So that's the Estonian government architecture. So what it means is everything is connected. We think that, that if everything is connected, it's super efficient and it gives a huge opportunity for people, for companies to create, to, to actually create good stuff. Uh, this picture is made for politicians because it looks good. <laughs> The, the true picture is this. <coughs> yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Looks like a spaghetti. It is. Uh, but it just represents the, the decentralized ar architectural model what Estonia has. And once again, all like private companies and government institutions, if they want to be connected, they can be connected. And they are. Of course, if you want to be like closed, you, you can, it's up to you. But if you want to be connected, it's easy for you. I mean, like, you can declare taxes like straight from, from your ERP system. You don't have to do any accounting on top of that. Or, or use your bank account for that purpose. I mean, like, that's, 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 the, that's the services you can build on those. But I'm, 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 I'm telling this story for you because of, uh, because of this. Estonia is a small nation. It's 1.3 million people only. 
uh, even though the country is quite large. I mean, like, uh, land-wise, we are bigger than uh, Netherlands or Switzerland. But people-wise, we are extremely small. And uh, that's why we are very keen to keep all Estonians somehow connected with Estonia, because there aren't too many of us. It's a small nation. But it also gives us the opportunity to do uh, disruptive things in government area. And what, one thing what we can do is that we can start increasing our population. I mean, like, it's every government's dream is to give more wealth to the people. At least politicians say it in the election campaign, like, uh, that the country should be richer, more money to the people, etc. So that, that's the ultimate goal of every country. The problem is that uh, to solve that goal in government, you need to do the same kind of things what you do in private sector. So in most cases, in private sector, if you want to do more revenue, you need more customers. Simple, more customers, more revenue, but at least potential revenue. So in Estonian case, what can we do? <clears throat> I didn't fix that slide. That slide was meant for Europe. So uh, in Europe, we want to do, come from 1.3 million up to 10 million nation. So a small nation like Estonia wants to become a big nation as Sweden. But I forgot I'm in India. <laughs> so I, I should put like 10 billion there. Like. <laughs> So to make sense here more. But just, just like, uh, go down. Go to the nanoscale, like, uh, compared with you. So in Estonia, if you look at this problem, how can we get from 1.3 million to 10 million to, to increase our population or our economy 10 times? If you look at this from the engineer's point of view, what can we do? So I wrote a program. What can we do? First of all, you can do babies. That's a choice. I mean, like, you can. I mean, like, those are my children. So I went to my wife and said, you know, darling, I have this 10 million program now. <laughs> and she looked at me, you must be kidding. <laughs> the door is there. Go to India. So. It's not a choice for Estonia. Uh, we are close with, the, with, the, with our birth rate, but it's still slightly negative. So our population actually decreases like around 5,000 every year. Not, not a big number, but we are, we are not, like, it doesn't increase, it decreases. So it's not a choice. Another choice, for example, where US or Germany or even Sweden have benefited a lot is immigration. Like they just they bring in more people. The problem is that Estonia is Nordic country, not the Baltic one. The Baltics, they live in south. So the latitude we are living is latitude 59, which is the same latitude as Alaska. So uh, like most of the year, like, like nine months of the year, we just have a very bad uh, skiing weather, uh, snowing. Uh, so uh, the, the, the temp air temperature uh, in average is plus five uh, all night. Like, all around the year. So it's not the best climate. It's good. For me, for example, here it's too hot, but it's good, especially inside. <laughs> and it's, it's, as it is in the north, it's also quite dark. So uh, that's why Estonians are so good programmers. Because if it's dark and you can't go out because it's cold, <laughs> what are you going to do? You either do babies that we don't do, <laughs> so most probably you program. So that's the thing that we do. So immigration is not a, a solution for us because you just don't want to come. You should. We are waiting. If you want to come to Estonia, please, join. But uh, I mean, like, we have a limit how many uh, immigrants can come to Estonia every year. It's a ridiculous number. It, it's uh, 1,200. Uh, but the point is that that number has never met. <laughs> so. So there is no point for the government to increase it because it's even not even close. Like, at least now we have the European Union uh, who actually sends us some immigrants from, from Greece and, and Italy. I mean, like, because there is a quota that everybody should get something in Europe. So thank you, Europe. So it's not a solution for us. So going back to the, the key question, like, as an engineer, 
if, if, the, if the Muhammad basically is not willing to come to the mountain, the mountain needs to go to the Muhammad, right? So, ta-da! Who says that you actually have to come to physically to Estonia to be part of our country? Because we are already serving Estonians all around the world. Why not you, if you want to? I'm like, in real life, I'm, most of the audience, I think you are Indians. But in virtual world, do you want to be an Estonian? <laughs> Kiss me and I make it happen. <laughs> uh, ladies, please. <laughs> so so that's the, that was the concept. I mean, like, because as Estonians, we, we mostly, how we communicate with each other uh, and with the government and with private companies, we do it over the internet. That's another problem. Uh, Estonians like Finns, uh, we need a huge space around us, uh, preferably two kilometers. <laughs> so uh, if you come closer than two kilometers, we get like, like, don't come too close. It's too close. Yeah. So we do it over the internet. And having more people like, interacting with our companies, with the government, it's just a question of scalability and performance. In the time of cloud, it's, it's nothing. I, I, can, I can increase the performance of my systems just with a couple of clicks. So it's, 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 not, it's not a problem at all. So why should you become an Estonian? Why? Uh, first, of all, first question, why not? But one of the trends we are looking at is that obvious trend. Uh, the world goes more and more global. Uh, most of you are software engineers, so you are already providing global services from India. So location doesn't matter. That's clear for you, definitely. If, those, if location doesn't matter, you can start benefiting from the, like, the benefits for, for what different regions are actually offering for you. So my question is, if you want to do a business in Europe, and I just remember to you, like, all the European Union countries are equal. So if you have a business in Estonia, you already have a business in Europe. So if you want to do a business in Europe from here, without physically traveling there, having bank account, having company, doing all your transactions, signing your contracts uh, behind your kitchen table here with a, with, a, with a great climate, I mean, like, this can be, this can be for you. Also, what we see as a trend is, is the thing that the governments are lazy. Governments are lazy pastors, and the governments create hassle to people. I mean, like declaring taxes in many countries is, is at least one work week costs uh, thousands of dollars or euros. In our case, it's a zero click. Zero click. No clicks at all. The government sends you an SMS that uh, like, should, you should pay that, that this amount of money, or you should get back that, that, get back that, that amount of money, and that's it and then you act. So our question is, that we don't want to create another Luxembourg or Switzerland. We don't want to trick with taxes, even though, for example, corporate tax in Estonia is zero. Uh, so if you keep the money inside your company, if you reinvest the uh, money, uh, you're not taxed. But we, we think even further. We think, think in, in this way that you are Indian tax resident. You're not Estonian tax resident. Even if you have a company in Estonia, you're still Indian tax resident. So you should, your taxes should be paid here. Why? Because you're using this country's roads, you're using this country's healthcare system, education system, etc. You're part of this society, you, your taxes should be paid here. Right. And you shouldn't pay those taxes in Estonia because you are not using our roads, you're not using our, our education system, system. You're not using which is fine. And that's what we want to provide. We would like to have the situation where if you have a company in Europe located in Estonia, you become part of our company's like, economy. So you need a bank account. So one of our banks gets a customer. If there is like thousands of, of ten thousands of millions of customers, that bank need, needs to hire more people to serve you. And that's how we benefit. So we, need, we didn't want to collect taxes from you, but we want to find more customers to our companies. And if they are richer, the country is richer. That's the whole concept of this, 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 this e-residency. And, and, and that's the thing that we, 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 we see happening not only in Estonia, there are at least 
three countries who have already said that uh, they're looking at this con uh, concept and or they're already copying it. Like Netherlands have shown their interest, Dubai have shown their interest, Singapore has shown their interest. And this becomes a normal thing that even though you are Indian resident and, and you live in India, you will have one year residency in Europe, one year residency most probably in Singapore, why not one in US? Because that's the disruption that governments will start to provide to the people in global market. And we, as a small country, like always, try to invent something new. And that's our, our how say, model. So, Uber, you all know this uh, picture, of course. I mean, like, so Uber, the world's largest taxi company without any cars, Airbnb, largest accommodation provider without any rooms. I present to you So, to, to, to summarize my short speech here, uh, become, please become part of our economy, so we can go grow as big as you are, at least we are thinking big or dreaming big, so uh, let's make this dream uh, happen, and of course I promise we will continue to do babies also, so thank you.